Hey everyone, it's the Gadget Guru. Um, I made a video, uploaded it last night, and it's kind of a crappy video, so I figured that I was going to delete it and remake it. So that's what this is going to be. It's going to be a remake of that video. And this video, like I said, I don't really know the name of this. It's like an inspiration slash request video. I was talking to some friends, and we started discussing, you know, why are certain people always at the top table and and other people who are running the exact same deck aren't and we thought it boiled down to four major things so I wanted to go over those things and just get your opinions see what you think about it first one learn to fully understand a card's potential um, you know that means when one player looks at prohibition and says oh it's an okay card it'll stop win condition decks like final countdown I'm not gonna run it as where another player will look at it and go Hey, this would be really good against Lightsworn. It could automatically stop JD plays or Celestia or whatever I don't want playing. And if I end up playing against a GB deck, I could Prohibition Best Yari. And, you know, he sees multiple different uses for the card where the other casual player only sees one or two uses. And when he plays the card in his side deck and the other person doesn't, or when he plays it in general and the other person does, you know, he, he's able to side it in more and get more use out of it. So that's the first part of this. Second part is learn the technical ruling on your cards. Um, when I say that, I mean um, like Card Trooper versus Doom Caliber Knight. Most players, most casual players that go to regionals do not know that you, you can mill with Card Trooper, make him a 19, and push into Doom Caliber Knight and suicide. Because milling is not a cost and increasing his attack doesn't is an effect that activates. It's just a byproduct of milling the three. Um, so you can summon a card trooper, mill three, make him a 19, and crash into a doom caliber, and it won't, and doom caliber won't kill card trooper by his first effect. So it's really good for that. Um, and but a lot of players don't know that. Uh, and it's just it's rulings like those, or like um, rulings such as I summon debris dragon, I special summon lone fire. Can I tribute lone fire? And I see a lot of people do that. They go debris dragon, lone fire, tribute lone fire. Try and get the effect, and then they find out, oh crap, Debris still negates it? Oh, I probably should have known that ruling. You know, it's rulings like those that really win win or lose games. Three is learn to forecast your opponent's moves. You need to learn to be able to tell what a deck's going to do before it does it. Like, if you're reversing, if a experienced Yu-Gi-Oh player ends up reversing Ben Samurai, they know exactly what it's going to do. They know on the next turn, they're going to play Ben Samurai, play a crap load of equips, and attack for game with Decree or trap stun or something like that so they know in order to stop it they should have book of moon set or effect veiler or summon a light monster with honest in hand you know they, they know how to counteract it and they can tell what they're going to do on the next turn as a casual player will go hmm okay so he added a you know three star four star dark monster to his hand hmm, okay i won't i don't fear it that much or when you're playing against um, what's a good example? When you're playing against um, a light swarm, you should know 60 to 80 percent of the time their face down monsters will be a Raiko. So if you can kill it without attacking it, you should do that. Or they know to summon a monster, attack the Raiko, let Raiko kill the monster, then set back rows. I've seen a lot of casual players go summon a monster, set two back row, attack into a Raiko, Raiko destroys the back row. And that just really hurts the player, and they lose their bottomless or whatever face down, and it's just it's really bad. So you know that's you need to learn how to forecast your opponent's plays, and play it to where you're gaining advantage faster than they are. Fourth one is keep carnal knowledge of the in-game play. Um, always remember exactly what's in your grave, what's in your opponent's grave, you know what's been played during the duel. I mean that can win or break games like. You know, when a player draws into Wolf and it's only card in their hand, and they look in their grave and go, "Oh, I can't win," but they forget they could burial from a different dimension their Plague Spreader, then return for Plague Spreader and attack for game because their opponent only has like a hundred life points. I mean, like I've seen this. I saw this at the regionals. I was watching a Lightstorm player. He had Burial, Wolf, Jane, and something else. And he looks at his graveyard and he looks over his stuff and goes, "Oh, I can't win this." Which is retarded, because he could have went, Burial, bring back Plague Spreader, summon Jane, 
Remo uh, return Wolf top of deck, Special Summon Plague Spreader, Synchro into Brown, like a 2300, ditch his last card, Aaron or whatever, and spin his opponent's monster and attack for a game. And he would have had a game. But he forgot, you know, he didn't think about, oh, I could return Plague Spreader, blah, 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 blah. You know, he didn't think about that. So it's, you know, you got to keep the in-game knowledge and know exactly what they have. Or if your opponent beckonings, you need to remember what they beckoning to their hand and remember, okay, they've played this, they played this, they played this, but they still have but double honest. I don't want to go attacking into them and try to play a Kalut. They're just going to double honest for game. It's stuff like that that wins or breaks games. Um, so basically, I'm going to try and keep the videos coming, guys. Um, if you have any suggestions or anything like that, just let me know. Um... The next this the next video is gonna be a format talk, so I'll get that one up after this one, and you guys have a good day. Bye. Oh, it's the Gadget Guru. Bye.